Good morning, Great Dent. Um, for those of you back at school, uh, welcome. For those at home and have chosen to remain at home, uh, I know this wasn't an easy decision to make, you and your family, uh, but you must do what is best for yourself and your loved ones. And we will try our best to support you and try our best to assist you, all of you, whether you're at school or not, uh, during this uh, very uncertain times. Today we're going to look at a poem or study a poem called A Young Man's Thoughts before June the 16th by Faisal Yohannesson. A very powerful anti-apartheid poem uh, with a very, very important message. When we study a poem or analyze a poem, first thing we should do is look very closely or study the title. Because the title will give us some idea of the context or the content of the poem. A young man's thoughts before June the 16th. A young man thoughts before June the 16th. What jumps out or the most obvious aspect of the title is the date, June the 16th. June 16th is uh, Youth Day. Uh, it's a day that we use to, or the day that is taken to reflect on the impact young people made during the apartheid struggle. Youth Day is also a significant day in our history because it's a day that we associate with the Soweto uprising, where young people decided to make a stand against the apartheid system to try and enforce change. A young, young people took risks, their lives, to fight for equality. Young people not much older than you decided to, to, to take a stand. Um, a young man's thoughts before June 16th, what you would know about June 16th, and that's a way to uprising as well, is that many young people lost their lives during protest action. They were shot and killed by the apartheid police. So the poem, uh, the poem's title, A Young Man's Thoughts Before June 16th, in hindsight, knowing what we know, we know that June 16th uh, would turn out to be a very violent day of protest for young people. And the title, Young Man's Thoughts, is reflecting on taking part or partaking in this protest action. So the poem focuses, the poem focuses on uh, not the political aspects, but the human aspect of what someone would feel, um, what a young person would feel uh, who is about to take part in, uh, in facing this, this danger, facing um, uncertainty, uh, death, facing death, but facing it because he believes that his sacrifice is for the greater good. To sacrifice your life for something meaningful or a cause that you believe in can be incredibly noble. But with that, you cannot uh, escape certain emotions like fear and uh, uncertainty. So Young Man's Thoughts Before June 16th, by reading the title, we know it's about a young man who's going to take part, or uh, he's going to protest on, take part in protest action on June 16th. Let's read the poem together. Tomorrow I travel on a road that winds to the top of the hill. I take with me only the sweet memories of my youth. My heart aches for my mother for Friday nights with friends, around a table with a broad belch of beer. I ask only for a sad song, a song 
sung by a woman with downed eyes, and strummed by an old man with a broken brow. Oh, sing my sad song, sing for me. My sunset is drenched in blood. Wow. Let's, uh, let's look at the obvious. What do you notice about this poem? One thing you should notice, the structure of the poem. Uh, free verse, um, lowercase. Uh, the letters are written in lowercase. Uh, there's no punctuation. That is done for various reasons. Firstly, it reflects uh, it's, uh, one continuous idea. Um, who can tell me what that is called? Enjambment. Enjambment is a form of writing where uh, punctuation is intentionally, intentionally excluded. So it can give the impression of a flow or a, a continuous thought, a continuous idea. What else do you notice? If you look at uh, the words highlighted in yellow, um, alliteration, belch, broad belch beer. The poet uses alliteration as well. Uh, alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds. Uh, you look at the symbolism. If you look at the words highlighted, sunset, drench, red, wines. The symbolism or connotation, meaning um, what these words represent, um, is, is very impactful. Wines, a, a winding road is a road that twists and curves um, up to the top of a hill. The connotation there, or the symbolism, is uh, struggle, the obstacles, the, the difficulty that uh, the young man faces. Sunset, the connotation there is death. Um, the symbolism of a sunset is the ending of one's life. So we know at the end of the poem the young man dies, or he knows he's going to die. Drenched in blood, or red blood drenched, a very violent way of dying. So the poem starts with him reflecting on his life, how he feels, and it ends with him knowing his impending death. Let's look at the poem again. Tomorrow I travel on a road that winds to the top of the hill. I take with me only the sweet memories of my youth. Memories of my youth. So the tone of the poem at the beginning is nostalgic, you could say. Nostalgic. Um, what is nostalgia? Reflecting on past memories. Reflecting on past memories. Joyful or happy memories. So the poem, poet, my apologies, the poet is thinking of a happier time. A happier time. What happens when we become nostalgic? We reflect on ourselves, we reflect on a past memory, and we feel happy in the moment. If you think of a birthday celebration four years ago, you think about it today, you suddenly take it back to that moment and you feel those feelings, you feel happy again. So the poet or the young man wishes for a happier time. As you read on, my heart aches for my mother, for Friday nights with friends, longing. So the tone of the poem um, changes to a tone of longing, longing or missing. When you miss someone, you long for them. Um, a young man also illustrates how young this person is because when you're young you, and you're afraid, you want your mother, you want your parents. They offer you safety and security. Um, when, you're, when you face fear, they are there to comfort you. So the tone of the poem now changes to longing. 
around the table with a broad belch of beer. I asked only for a sad song sung by a woman with downturned eyes and strung by an old man, a broken brow, a song, a, oh sing my sad song for me, for my sunset is drenched with red. And that final line of the poem is so powerful. For my sunset is drenched in red. Sunset, death, as we mentioned earlier. Drenched, blood. Red, blood. Covered in blood. Violence. So he knows he will meet a very violent death. But... There's acceptance of it. Meaning, is it not better or is it less fearful knowing you are going to die as opposed to not knowing when your time on earth will end? Okay. Very beautiful poem. More human-centered, meaning about feelings and emotions than political, which makes this poem especially relevant and it's relevant for because of two very important parts number one the impact a young person has in making change you have a great uh, power and sometimes young people forget that that you have it within yourself so once you develop your own ideas and the way you view the world you can make a change and also to remember the Soweto uprisings and that and part of me and how those young people and the sacrifice they made for you today. Okay. In our next video, we'll do a line by nine analysis of this poem.